What's up everybody? My name's Andrew with Andy Direct, doing this video in collaboration with MGN. If you want to check out my channel, I review solely indie games. Link's going to be down in the description. But today we're going to be looking at Curse of the Dead Gods. A lot of people seem to be loving this isometric roguelike from the developers at Past Tech Games. You play as a character that seeks riches, eternal life, and divine power that leads him to this accursed temple. Work your way through the dark labyrinths of monsters and curses that plague you just to reach the riches at the top. Curse of the Dead Gods graphically is beautiful, with unique enemies and fluid animations, each of the three sections having their own different and unique enemies. None are duplicated across them, but they do seem to be limited in their sections, with there only being probably like six to possibly eight variants to each. But between the separation of monsters, the level designs are also unique, all having their own statue traps and designs. Some elements are used in between all of them, but it's surprisingly small. And there's a lot of objects scattered around that are unique assets for each labyrinth. The labyrinths are separated, like I said, by three different styles. The jaguar that revolves around flames with many of the monsters in the labyrinths just upfront hitters with very few ranged attacks, but the ones they do have are quick and hard hitting as well. The eagle labyrinth that revolves around lightning and storms have archers and harpies being the main group of enemies with a few others that use long sweeping attacks to inflict damage. And then lastly is the serpent, the poison labyrinth with Medusa style monsters with spears and plague bringers that are heavily magic focused and summon vermins that are just really these small bugs that can explode upon death. Now I love the separation of the labyrinths. Each one feels unique from another. And you also have events that'll open up to you to attempt at least once that release almost every single day. Each event has stipulations like stronger when it's darker, lose all sense of direction and more, rewarding you with skulls and treasure to help you unlock weapons and perks to help you reach the top. The skulls and jade rings you acquire through your runs can be used in the underworld for perks. Now this includes blessings, like small perks that'll assist you, like more damage to enemies when hit by a trap, greed kills restore one or more stamina, and so on. Forsaken weaponry that upon locking can be found throughout the labyrinths, each having a nice little perk like lightning or the final swing on your attack won't use stamina. Then there are the weapon altars you can upgrade. Now these are located in the underworld to pick up stronger weapons before you enter the labyrinths. Upgrading these altars will give you a greater chance of acquiring higher grade weapons, when you die and return to the underworld that is. And lastly, Divine Favors, which you unlock and gives you the ability to switch a choice at one of the sacrifice statues to hopefully find the items that you're looking for. Now, in all honesty, none of these upgrades per se really do much to the overall gameplay. The blessings seem to be shallow and they really don't bring much punch to the game. Weapons and weapon altars do hold some value, but you truly don't get fantastic things very often, and you'll make many run-throughs before you get to see anything you truly like. The upgrades to me honestly just, they feel more gimmicky than necessary. The overall gameplay though does feel good. Fighting mechanics feel weighty and responsive. There is a small thing where I kept getting caught up on enemies while trying to escape explosions, which honestly can be annoying in tight situations, but it never seems to be too prevalent. Then there are the curses that honestly are just annoying because each door you enter, even when you first enter the labyrinth, it, it stings you with these 20 points. Get to 100 points, you receive a curse. Now, some of these curses can be beneficial, like enemies exploding upon death when on fire or traps going off when you're near them. Then there are the negative ones, like slowly losing health till one HP left or slowly gaining curse points. Now, I understand the curses and they're meant to push you into the sense of urgency. But for some of the enemies giving you curse points, if they hit you, the blood sacrifices to get uh, items, healing cost curse points, and then the door adding points on you, even on the first lower labyrinths, you honestly could easily get maxed out to the level five fairly quickly. The curses are more profound and more useful and hindrance than the blessings. So it's weird that you're gonna have to try to balance it, but you may find yourself trying to be cursed just to play the RNG to hopefully get a curse that you like. The labyrinths though by themselves are not too lengthy in the beginning taking only about 10, maybe 15 minutes. Later up the pyramid though, you have to run through the same bosses to reach the new ones. On the second stack, I honestly got bored. Running through the same bosses with any lack of story just kind of blew the wind out of my sails to reach the top. I don't really know why or the motivation to get up to the top. 
Repeating this over and over again gives me no satisfaction. It's a fun game, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have anything that drives me to return to the game, or keep me playing the game. If I had to honestly give this a score, it would be a 6, 6.5 out of 10. It's fun, but it's just missing that drive factor to keep me coming back. The best thing that I can say is, is if you're looking for a game like Hades, this is not what you're looking for. With no real story to drive you, it can become boring after a few hours. If you like games like this, then you're going to enjoy it. But if you, again, if you're looking for a game like Hades, you'll feel disappointed in this one. So if you guys do want to check it out, the link for the game is down in the description, as well as a link to the Discord if you want to come and chat. Don't forget to leave a like and sub if you haven't already, guys. We're always looking at brand new indie games, and you may find some that you missed. But, like always, guys, I'll see you in the next video, and have fun.